What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He gives me repose. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Yes, speak to God. Thank you. 
Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a shepherd's sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine if you will. Imagine that you're driving your car down Main Street, abiding by all the um, mileage uh, observances and looking out and enjoying, but all of a sudden you're just caught off guard a little bit and you hit someone. You run into someone, a walker, a bicycle, and that person dies. How would you feel? How would you feel? Today we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, and we're talking about our relationship with Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, but there are other shepherds among us that are looking out for us. And I know in this time of confinement, we're getting anxious. We want stores to open. We want to be, have our freedom uh, restored in that, to walk about and travel, do whatever we want. But our authorities are being cautious because they don't want one dead body on their conscience. Do you? So I share this with you because I'm quite certain that most of our prisoners, if not all, are in the same camp as I am. 
On the same campus, the clergy are in this community, Protestant, Jewish, um, Catholic, and even uh, a Muslim. We've been dialoguing. We know what's good for us. We know what God intended for us. And so we're just being a little cautious so that we don't have the blood of someone on our shoulders. That, I wish, would re resonate with everyone in the world, let alone in our community or in our state. Our governor, our good shepherd, has been doing everything he can to protect us. Let us cooperate with him. Let us cooperate with that role of a shepherd. But today we celebrate Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and we also pray for vocations for our church that through the sacramental priesthood, we may experience the divine mercy, the divine mercy throughout our lives. You know, Jesus does care for us individually. We are called by name by God. We are given a name by our parents at birth and at baptism, but as a name that is also imbued in the heart and mercy of God, and so Jesus cares for us individually, as we heard in that responsorial psalm as Janice sung. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, as we are in this coronavirus of sorts, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Yes? Jesus not only guides us individually, he makes us members of his flock. It's a community of believers, the sheepfold described in today's gospel reading. You know, I haven't been around too many sheep, but when I was growing up, there was a neighbor who had quite a few sheep. We used to watch them and hear them and, and we have some fun the way we kind of bucked each other. But sheep have an instinct also to stay close together. It's a good instinct because an outliner becomes easy prey for a wolf or some other predator. You know my little Sophia, the schnauzer? She was bred to sleep right next to a German shepherd because she has keen ears. And, and so when she would hear a prowler coming, she would alert the German shepherd, and then the German shepherd would take care of the flock. Being isolated in our homes has perhaps made us aware of the need for physical closeness. I receive many emails and text messages that people long for the church to open. We all do. We all do. We long to have that closeness, to see the smiling faces, and perhaps even if we can't embrace immediately, to acknowledge each other. And I'm not talking so much about hugs and, and holding hands, but the importance of simply being together. And so thank God for technology, because in some way we can be together through live streaming. We are doing the best we can with the live streaming, the Zoom meetings, the FaceTime, but it only goes so far. It's still a distance. It's still an electronic distance. We belong together. And Jesus calls us his flock, because like the sheep, we need to share a physical space. You know... Our happiness, our sense of purpose, depends on having people who need us, who need us and rely on us. Isn't that true? Isn't that the, the value of marriage? That a husband and wife become one and care for each other and support each other? And it's the same in, in community and family. And like sheep, we do not uh, do well living isolated, not in the long run. It's good to have a little retreat once in a while, a little distance, but nevertheless, we tend to pull apart, even when we can be together. You can see this in our current crisis. This is the first major epidemic where most people have computers, they have internet and cell phones, and these devices can connect us together, yes, but they also can allow us to live in a world of, of distancing, a world of, of, ma of making where we do not have to be bothered by other people. We can turn the, the uh, Facebook off. Don't turn me off yet. <laughs> All of us have seen children wrapped up in their video games, maybe grandchildren. We older people, yes, we older people, Monsignor, Damien, the others here, we older people can also find things more entertaining than being with others starting to find that out.
using the technology, but spiritually and psychologically, we could easily harm ourselves should we fall into routines where isolation becomes the new normal. That could lead to further unraveling of relationships, not only in marriage and family and church, and even in civic life. But I know that we long to be with each other. And so in today's first reading from the Acts, the people ask Peter, what are we to do? What are we to do? And the first thing he says is, repent. For me, at the beginning of Mass, I find it with great hope and mercy, the penitential rite at Mass is a necessary reminder that when I say something I shouldn't, when I judge someone as I should not, as I have a thought that's not particular flattering, I need to repent. Peter says, repent, and then he immediately adds, and be baptized. We are baptized. You know, baptism is a, um, a, a deeply social act that unites us with Jesus and with other members of the church, his flock. And I know that we have many families waiting so that we can return to the ceremony and the celebration of baptism, let alone our elect. Repent and be baptized. You know, community, community in the true sense requires effort. It means coming together, supporting each other, thinking about each other, and helping and wishing the other well. And for this reason, I am so grateful to Sister Mary Rose, who stays connected with our elect who were to be baptized at Easter and long to be baptized and receive confirmation and, and Holy Eucharist. But they're in their confinement. She keeps in contact with them weekly and encourages them and continues to teach them the ways of our faith. I'm also very grateful to Lindsay Rivera, our confirmation coordinator, who is connecting with our youth and with support of some of, some of our adult mentors, keeping them connected as they long to be confirmed. Grateful to Memo, our seminarian, for making these connections possible. We need Jesus. We need his church. We need to gather like sheep in, uh, uh, in, in flock. There's a theologian by the name of Karl Rahner. He said that we must accept the burden of community if we're going to experience the freedom of the gospel. Interesting. It's only through community, being united to Jesus, that we are set free through the gospel. We cannot have Jesus as our shepherd without becoming members of his flock. And while Jesus shepherds us individually, he calls us to be members of his sheepfold through baptism and by the renewal of baptism that we might experience in confession and Holy Eucharist, his mercy, his love, his life. Gifts of Jesus through the ministerial priesthood are ways in which we experience those sacraments. So might we say a special prayer this day for vocations and ask our good and divine shepherd to send us vocations to our church, especially to the ordained ministries. And so I'm going to invite you to pray with me now. I'll read a few words and I'll let you then repeat them. God of all nations, we are most grateful for the for Saint Junipero Serra and the first Catholic missionaries and explorers who came to Alta, California. As strangers in a strange land, they brought with them countless skills, talents and traditions, but their greatest treasure was their faith. May the good news of Jesus Christ, which molded and shaped their lives, continue to mold and shape our lives today. Bless our Archdiocese of Los Angeles with men and women 
who will follow in their footsteps and serve the church as priests and deacons, religious women and men. Serve our Lord Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Help to hear your call to come and see. Help. Amen. Amen. So might you say a prayer for vocations throughout this week? Lord knows we need more priests, we need more deacons, we need more committed women and men and religious to help us in our understanding of community and the Good Shepherd and life in the church. Amen? Amen. So now, I said this last week, I know some of you might be watching in bed, you might be watching on your, in your easy chair or on your sofa and that up, 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 stand up. We're going to profess our creed. We're going to stand as a community of believers and profess our creed to our God and our Good Shepherd. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, but rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Good Shepherd does not allow the sheep to wander in harm's way. And so with confidence in the one who sustains and guides us, let us bring our prayers to the Lord. And so we pray for bishops and priests. May they follow the footsteps of the Good Shepherd by serving their flocks with self-sacrificial love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, for people of every nation and their leaders, their shepherds, may they realize the value of every person regardless of race, religion, or economic status, and work together to live in generosity and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord for those called to religious vocations, that they may respond with generous hearts to the Lord's voice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elect, those who long to receive the Easter sacraments, preparing for the sacraments of initiation, Aaron Duarte, Amen. Margaret Eddy, Amen. Alejandro Jimenez, Raiden Landeros, Amen. Yaneli Mendoza, Alandra Mantajano, Shay Adria, and Marlene Salgado. We pray to the Lord. For all who are serving their communities during this time of pandemic, for our health care workers, first responders, and those who provide food and essential services, may they be blessed with good health and be lifted up in spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for those beloved members of our parish community who are ill or homebound, especially June and James Antonoli, Cheryl Conway, Cheryl. Jerry Cranham, Jerry. Carlene Ackley, Rosemarie and Leo Garcia, Rose. Katie Distel, we pray to the Lord. And for our brothers and sisters who have died in faith, and we especially remember Pat and Levon Aske, Pat and Levon, Sonny Samiango, and Lupe Prado. We pray to the Lord. And for those intentions that are in our hearts. And we pray for your pastor, Father Tom. Mass is being offered for me, thank you. Uh, Jennifer Keats. Jennifer. An era of and, uh, and family. And all the living and deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear your love. God of mercy and love, you sent your Son to show us the pathway of abundant life. Hear our prayers that we might follow him with devotion all the days of our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept us at the present of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the small of his holy church. Look upon, grant we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, that, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our ending, unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may your spirit lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
but in this time of all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrifice who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, all their come with passport joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they have played. Sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. As we 
celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you count us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may brought, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, our Blessed Patrons, Buenaventura, Juniper Rosella, Kateri Tecalita, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am the Lord of 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 the Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle the eternal pastures, the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So I'm going to be away this week. No panic. Fine. It's kind of a little retreat, a little wait time, and uh, leaving the, uh, the sacramental life of the church in the ample hands of Father Damien Fernando and Monsignor Michael Jeanette. I hope the church is still here when I return, but I suspect it will be. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.
I'm 